Uh, Rick Santelli. Always, always, oh, I've never seen a segment with him not yelling. Now, I know I live in a glass house because oftentimes I start yelling on this program, but usually when I yell, there's a rational basis for it. I'm yelling about, you know, people being treated as second-class citizens because of their uh, sexuality. Uh, I'm yelling about wars killing over 100,000 civilians. I, I yell at things that make sense to yell at. He's always at a decibel level of uh, 4,261. Well, listen to this clip here. And this really encapsulates the Republican argument about economics. And I will explain the plethora of reasons why it is only exactly incorrect. Let's listen. For, for Rick, if you have a government that is taking steps that most they're just taking. Believe. Forget the no, steps. No, 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 no. This sequester is real, Rick. They're, they're going to. I think they're gonna... right. Right. Created by Jack Lou, your Treasury Secretary. I have Treasury to believe. Your Treasury Secretary too, Rick. This guy. No, no, no. Uh, hold on. These are um, th th these are steps that were agreed by Republicans and Democrats, as far as I can tell, from the sequester. And created by the mostly the president's people, and yes, voted on by everybody. Okay, and it was a bad plan. If, okay. If that's but what it takes to lower spending. It was a good. It's the law. And what I'm trying to say is that this general agreement, this will reduce GDP growth by one and a half percentage points and result in 500,000 to 700,000 fewer jobs. Now, yeah, yeah. Can, you know what, Steve? Why is that so important? If you pay for growth by taking and then you stop taking and stop paying, it goes up, it goes down. The, but, what you want is self sustaining growth. We don't have to pay Rick, for it. Rick, we a do things. have a choice. When, when, when a God choice. forbid an earthquake happens and a hurricane happens, there's nothing mankind or womankind can do about that. But right, a but they come up with sixty-five uh, billion, which is all the contention for every policy. I was on vacation last week, and I made up my mind I was not going to talk over you, Rick. So well, that's done. good. I did. That's I did. I'm, I made up you my always mind. come back to that. I made up my mind. So, mind. I will so, talk over you. Okay, that's <laughs> yeah, fine. So my point, Rick, is if you have a choice as to whether or not you want to put 500,000 or 700,000 people on the street looking for work uh, at oh, a time you when... you know what? If you want to put those people to work, put pro-growth policies, not socialism in place. So ready that's now. when you're going down the wrong road. My, my, God, there's so much to say about that, man. First of all, I couldn't even keep up with the contradictions. He started out attacking the president about the sequester. You heard him? He was like, well, that's your guys that put the sequester into place. That's your guys. So you're attacking the sequester, and then he makes a seamless transition in the next few sentences to praising the sequester. Like, ah, it's a bad policy, except if it cuts the deficit, it's a good policy. Wait a second, so which is it? You're attacking Obama for the sequester, and then you're praising the sequester. So wouldn't that, by logical deduction, mean you should be praising Obama if you like the sequester? And it is a bipartisan plan. The, the guy who's challenging Santelli here is 100% right. Paul Ryan was bragging about it. The Republicans were bragging about it. It literally shrinks government, right? Which is a Republican priority. And then, uh, I mean, that's the part most people are talking about now. The part where he talks about jobs. Well, why is that so important? Why is that so important? Why is it important to, ha to have an extra 500,000 to 700,000 jobs? And by the way, that's on the lower end of the economic numbers I've read in terms of how many jobs a sequester will create. Uh, or if, if we hadn't done the sequester, how many jobs would still be there? I've seen up to 1.5 million jobs, right? Why is that important? Uh, isn't the debate we're having about what's better for the economy? And isn't more jobs almost by definition better for the economy? God, these guys are amazing. And then they, these are the guys that pretend like they're the economic experts. And they're the ones who know what they're talking about. And they care about the American people. And they're on the side of the American people. When they're screaming, what does it matter if we lose 500,000 to 700,000 jobs? And then, look, the last thing on this and the fundamental flaw in Rick Santelli's silly little mind that he just doesn't get. In his mind, it's easy, right? He goes, oh, all you got to do is have pro-growth policies and then, and then the, the economy will be better. It's as simple as that. Uh, in other words, let me decode that for you. Pro-growth, as in Republican economic policy, he's essentially saying Republicans are right about everything and Democrats are wrong. Ah, ah. 
pro growth. He's one of these guys who loves Reagan, right? Well, I got, I got news for you, buddy. We tried Reaganomics. You want to know what happened? We had a, a boom bust cycle where the economy took off because when you deregulate, uh, Wall Street runs rampant, right? Uh, you boom for usually anywhere from four years to eight years, and then you tank because it's a house of cards. You create uh, essentially a tremendous bubble or multiple bubbles in the economy. That's what happens when you deregulate. That's what happens when you cut taxes for the rich. And then uh, on top of that, it wasn't just Reagan who we realized was a failure. And also, by the way, he added to the deficit tremendously. How about George W. Bush? He acts like the years 2000 to 2008 never happened. He's arguing for the same policies that Bush implemented. And look what happened. We had the Great Recession, you dumbass. Oh, these guys are amazing, man. They, you know what they are? It's, they're anti-empiricists. So they can theorize and philosophize all day long about, oh, I think this is what makes sense and this doesn't make sense because it's the worldview I've decided to embrace. But when you present evidence and you show them, well, look, that I'm sorry, man, that just happens to not be true, that's when they start screaming. Yeah, implement pro-growth policies. Okay, you want to implement a pro-growth policy? Uh, let's do uh, the new New Deal tomorrow. Let's do a massive um, divergence of resources towards infrastructure spending. Let's do high-speed rail. Let's invest in a green economy.